Hi, uh, I'm going to present a short video on how to work use the work schedule in Simeo. Uh, what is the work schedule? Uh, resources like servers have typically two capacity types that you can select. Uh, default setting is a fixed capacity. So this is the case where, uh, you know, when the simulation starts, a server has a predetermined fixed capacity. So for example, usually it's one, uh, but you could change the value to two, three, any value you want. Um, you can use a reference property to change it. Um, you know, using a variable, um, or you can just set it to a deterministic value for the whole simulation. Another option is use a work schedule. Um, so you can turn a, essentially what that does is it, it'll turn a server or any resource um, on or off based on some type of schedule. Okay. So which objects have this work schedule option? Uh, there are many. Uh, you know, the common ones we'll use are the servers, resources, workers, uh, and others. Um, so uh, the purpose of this video is to just kind of demonstrate how to set up a work schedule. Um, and you can watch some of my other videos to do some of the more advanced, nuanced uh, functions with these. I'll give you a case here. Uh, I have this simple model uh, where a source creates a customer. And let's say the customer arrives to the system every 10 minutes. So that is the source one object creates a customer model entity at a fixed 10 minute interval. Yeah, so every 10 minutes, you see one of these green customers or green monitors being generated by the source. Uh, it'll come into the store and at the store, uh, this store is a server. Uh, it represents let's say, some kind of a storefront. The store opens 30 minutes after simulation starts. And okay, so initially, then what you're gonna have is you know two customers that are waiting here until the store opens. Okay, that's what you want to model. Okay. And then once it's processed, I think I set the process time to let's say it's something much smaller, uh, we should see the customer leave. Okay. But um, if you set this with a fixed capacity, um, you'll see that the store will start processing the customers as soon as they arrive. But once I set up a work schedule, you'll basically see this store turn uh, white, it means it's off shift. Essentially what that means is the store is closed. Okay, and then once it um, once it turns to on shift, then it's open and then it'll start processing the customers. Okay, so let's go into Simeo. Um, you can get these files in the shared drive. Um, so there's my simulation model. And I said, as I described earlier, we have this customer amount of being created by the source every 10 minutes, deterministic, it's a fixed interval. They'll arrive and go into source. So right now, the default setting is initial capacity of one and fixed, right? So if I run this simulation, uh, as soon as things arrive, it just exits, right? Okay, let me speed up a little bit here. Things arrive and it'll just go out immediately, right? Okay, uh, this is not what we want, right? We want the store to have basically like a realistic store where it, it's not a 24 hour store. Uh, it'll open and close based on some kind of a schedule. Okay, uh, so let me create that work schedule. So you, you notice here, you have this option of work schedule. Uh, we don't have anything assigned to it, okay? So I'm gonna go into data. I'm gonna go into work schedules, okay? So there's two options. You can make a pattern based or a table based. Um, since I want my schedule to basically repeat, I'm going to use a pattern based option. Um, I'm going to call this, uh, so you, you can call this however you want. Um, so you have to establish a work schedule and then you have to, in, you have to add the D patterns to that work schedule. So I'll demonstrate here. So I'm going to create a work schedule called store schedule. Okay. And right now it's not, so it doesn't have anything. You could actually then attach a certain day pattern to this. Um, the standard day pattern looks like here, it's already predefined as 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 to 5 p.m. So like a typical you know, 8 to 5 p.m. worker. This is not what I want. Let's say I want the store pattern to be something different, okay? So I want my store pattern up here as I said in the slides earlier. I want it to open at 30 minutes after the simulation starts and we'll leave it open for however long, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, so let's call this store day. Sorry, the plus sign here. 
the start time by default, the simulation starts at midnight, right? So I want to make sure the start time here, just so I could demonstrate, is um, I'll start at 12:30 a.m. and then I'll run it for uh, just we're not going to run it this long. So just something anything large enough, let's say like five hours. Okay, I might get changed to 5.3. And then I'll leave these values to default one at one for now. This is the day pattern. Now I'm not done. I have to put this day pattern into the schedule. So now if I go up here, I have the store day day pattern. So I'm gonna put that into every single day of the week. But you know, this is a useful function because let's say you have a worker and they only work, let's say five days a week, they they don't work on Thursday and Friday, right? Then you can actually just skip. Thursday and Friday and put store day here. Now, if they have different day patterns to on the day of the week, you simply just have to make more day patterns and select the right ones here. So let's say uh, different on Tuesday, uh, the store has a different operating hours. You can set it up on a different day pattern and add it here, okay? So for now, I'm gonna assume they all have the same business hours basically every single day. They open 30 minutes after simulation starts and we're running arbitrarily for five hours just to demonstrate. So I'm gonna go into my facility view now, go to schedule. I'm gonna set my initial work schedule to the store schedule. Um, you can look at the active symbol here and you can tell it, you know, your server has these different symbols depending on the status of it. Um, so when I run the simulation, it should turn white, right? Because there is no, um, no, it's off shift. Yeah. And right when it hits uh, half an hour, we should say change from white to gray, but it'll probably turn green because there's probably, there's going to be customers waiting here. So it, when it opens the door, it'll start processing right away. So you'll see this turn from white to green immediately. Let's, let me put down a, uh, let's put a status label here. I'm gonna put time now. So we're gonna have the clock of our simulation uh, as we're running this. So when I run, I'll just demonstrate here. Let me, if I run this, this is a clock in hours. So our simulation has ran for 0 0.016 hours, okay? So you notice right away, uh, we did have a customer arrive but nothing's happening because the store is basically closed because it's not a work digital, okay? Once this value hits 0 0.5, a half an hour basically, we should turn the store open, right? So it'll go from the white to green because it'll start processing where we're waiting here. Okay, so let's run that. Then let me speed it up a little bit to go through. Um, you know what? Let's just leave it. I think it's going to hit 0.5 very quickly. And then I'll pause it. You can kind of see here. Okay, right. So right away when it's 0.5. It went through very quickly. You know, let me change one more thing. It's gonna slow down that server. So you can kind of see what's going on. Um, I'm gonna change the processing time of the server to you know, determine to five minutes. You know, so you can kind of see that slow down there. Rerun. One, two, three, four. So now you see, I Half an hour later, store open. Um, there's one person being processed, and now this is green. So that means it's processing. It's open. It's processing. Okay, yeah. and it'll stay open. Continuously, right? So it'll keep going. So once this person leaves, we set it for five minutes. So every, um, no, every five minutes you see a monitor. Okay. Uh, one other thing. One one change I want to make here. So if you notice here, by default, the capacity when it opens, as in when, when it's on, on shift, is one, right? So how do I change that capacity? So if you go back to this date pattern here, um, under the value, this value controls the ca uh, capacity, the current capacity through that time period. So if I change this to two, um, when, the, uh, when the resource enters this part of the date pattern, it'll now have a capacity of two, okay? So let's um, demonstrate that. Let me run it again. So initially, it was just one capacity, right? You had to, one customer was served at a time. Now, since I changed that value to two, we just see two customers being served at the same time. Okay, so now I'll pause it there. 
Joke on file, storage is open. Now you see two customers being served at the same time. Okay. You can also reference this as a, a variable. You could reference a reference property or a save variable if you wanted to. You don't have to uh, punch in a, you know, an integer value here if you didn't want to. Okay. That's how we use, that's how we set up basic work schedule. Now let's add one more, uh, one more element to this. What if I want a resource? Uh, what, I, what if I want to attach a secondary resource to this? Okay, so here's a scenario. Um, we have the same setup, but now we have this attendant resource. Okay, so same setup, customers still arrive at a 10 minute fixed interval, store opens 30 minutes after start simulation, but then the customer cannot be processed at the store without an attendant. So we're going to attach the attendant as a secondary resource. The tenant starts work after 40 minutes from the start simulation, though. So the store might open after 30 minutes, but the customer cannot be processed until the tenant shows up, which is 45 minutes. Okay. And then once the, you know, the customer is done processing, it'll leave the system. Okay. So let's add in that, this logic and see what, how I can set up the work schedules there. Go back to my Simio model. Okay. And I'm going to stop simulation and add in the resource. Okay. And I'm going to name this resource attendant. Okay. Um, right now, it's again, it's got a fixed capacitor once. So if I run this, it'll run. So the attendant is you know, on shift. Once it hits 0 0.5, everything will work the same. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. First of all, I didn't connect this to the store yet, right? Okay, so let's store it to the, let's add it as a secondary constraint. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go to the store. If you look on a secondary resource for processing, we want, so we can do an add-on process to do like season release. But here we know that, you know, we wanna set up so that every time a customer enters the store, it's gonna basically grab this attendant always, okay? So then I can go in here and say, okay, I'm gonna do, Second resource, uh, I can just use other resource fees and do it on entering after, uh, before processing, after processing. That's one option. Another option is I can just do this, utilize this repeat group option here. Okay, um, say true. Um, so I'm gonna set up a single row here. So I'm gonna add the specific resource I'm gonna add here is the attendant, okay. I don't have to change anything else here for now. Okay. Say close. Okay. So this means that every time the store is trying to process anything, it's going to require this attendant resource for it to do anything. Okay. So now when I run this, okay, um, you'll see that when it hits 0 0.5, the store opens, it'll start processing. But then because you need the attendant, you'll notice something different from our previous setup here. So once it's you see it now, even though the store we set up the work schedule to have a capacity of two, you can only process one at a time because the capacity of the tenant is fixed at one. Okay, um, so we're, we're going to change the uh, capacity type from fixed to work schedule for the attendant as well. Uh, keep in mind again to set up the secondary resource at this server, you can use an add-on process to so do before processing after processing. Um, you could also use, um, you know, these other resource fees uh, requests here, and then you release using other resource release. You can do that as well. Uh, you would use this uh, for processing resource um, you know, if it's a repeating pattern. So there are some advantages uh, for using this um, built-up function. And really, the key thing is this off shift rule. Um, you can say finish work when started, switch which was possible. Um, I'm gonna play around with this in a different video, so check that out if you're not sure. Um, so let me, uh, let me let me pause this here. Let me set up a work schedule for the attendant. So I'm gonna go to data here. I'm gonna make a new uh, pattern. Um, let me call this uh, attend schedule, okay? And then I'm gonna create a different date pattern. And so this also starts at 12 a.m., but not, not 12, I'm sorry, it starts at 12.45. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, I did the wrong thing here, right? I put it the wrong place. Um, so 10 day, make a new day pattern. So 10 day starts 
at 12.45, okay? And I'll make it run also five hours, just doesn't really matter how far we um, make it go because we just, you know, just want to make it long enough to see it in simulation. And then we'll change this value. Uh, you know, let's leave it at one, I'll come and change it a little bit here. So let me run this really quick. So again, when I run this, nothing happens, uh, the initial case. When it is drop, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't attend the work schedule to tendon, right? So I'm gonna go to tendon, change the capacity time to work schedule. Initial work schedule now is attended schedule, okay? So when I run this, you see now this tendon is gray, oh, it's white. So if you look at the symbols of tenant, this is also means it's off shift, okay? We should turn this to um, green because it's gonna go on shift and start processing when it's 0.5, right? Um, no, I'm sorry, 0.75, right? Um, so it's, the tenant is still off shift, right? So even though the store is not open, you see now it's turned green, nothing's actually getting processed because the attendant is not available, okay? So let's keep running it. Once it's 0.75, we should now see these customers being processed. Oh, I misspoke, it's not, let me make sure I set up the, oh, I'm sorry. I made another mistake, uh, it's early in the morning. Um, I need to add the day patterns to the tenant, right? So I'm gonna add the day, I forgot to do that. I'm just gonna add it for all the seven days. Again, you can set up different day patterns depending on the day of the week. Uh, again, so sorry, let me rerun this. Okay, so it should be all connected now. Once it's 0 0.5, we just see the store open, but nothing happening because we don't have a tenant. Once the clock hits 0 0.75, that's when the tenant uh, goes to on shift and we should see things get processed. So let's wait until it hits 0 0.75. Okay, now you see the tenant is not working, right? Uh, you notice though, it's only working one, it's only processing one customer at a time. Even the store work schedule says there's a capacity of two. Uh, it's limited by the fact that there's only one attendant at a time, right? So if you wanna match the same capacity uh, for the attendant with the store, uh, same thing I did before, I go to the data here, change the value here for the attendance work schedule day pattern to two. And let's rerun. Right when we hit 0 0.75, we should now see two model entities, two customers in process all at the same time. Right here, see it's stored open, but the attendant has not arrived. Now the attendant has arrived and then the capacity on the attendant is now two. So now we can process two model or two customers at the same time, okay? So hopefully this video helps you set up a general work schedule in your simulation model. Um, yeah, there are other videos um, that I will post related to some of the nuances of this. Uh, so all of those hopefully they'll help you on whatever you're working on. Uh, best of luck on everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.